Merchants, good evening to different cities that are joining us this afternoon. By the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to greet you and welcome you tonight on day one of seven for our online Passover conference that we are starting today. And as we begin today, I want to encourage you, know, you and your friends to uh, prepare yourself to eat Passover here, you know, Jesus, our Passover lamb. I greet all of you uh, in the precious name of Jesus. And as we gather, you know, just for one thing, uh, Passover. This is the week of Passover, so this whole week, the focus uh, will not just be, you know, spontaneous teachings and, and, and spontaneous preachings. Uh, this is the week that we will basically be focusing on uh, Passover and teaching dynamics of Christ, our Passover, because our Passover is Jesus, and uh, we want to focus on that this week in the precious name of Jesus. The other thing that I want to say is that um, a number of you are struggling to catch up with the pace of messages that are coming and teachings that are coming. Um, I would want to encourage you to quickly cover up what you have not yet covered up because we have thrown in a whole lot of stuff, you know, from yesterday uh, going backwards for the last uh, 10 days. Today we're in day 11 of 21 in terms of our no lockdown. And we have thrown in you know, a lot of content, um, you know, for the previous, uh, for the last few days and, and you need to sit back and uh, chew and digest what you know we have been teaching and bringing out uh, for the last few days so i want to welcome you uh, my friends my family members and pdc ppk uh, all kinds of uh, you know you know you know a circle of people that we have i see some of you you're watching from Tendo. Some of you are watching all the way from Chandama, next to Chiramba there. I hope the message is coming loud and clear, Makitan. Um, and uh, I want to welcome those of you that are around Khoteng. I see even Siebe in Pulukwane. You know, Siebe has been also uh, following a number of these teachings that are going on. And uh, let's keep it this way, Siebe. Uh, welcome the men of God uh, from Mashau. Wamaosi, we want to welcome you um, for, 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 for the beginning of our Passover week. So like I was saying, this week we are starting an online um, Passover conference. And one of my leaders spoke to me this morning and she said that for the first time, uh, welcome Muto, um, for the first time um, you're going to have a conference uh, without you know stress of budgets, without uh, having meetings of planning and having to sit in long meetings to plan and prepare for 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 conference, uh, so you're just gonna have an online conference, no stress, no accommodation, no guest speakers, nothing whatsoever. It's just gonna be uh, you know a simple, well organized conference on online. So welcome to day one of our. Um, uh, online Passover conference. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be wonderful. Um, welcome, Ruti Tawo Boshoman. Welcome, and uh, also Mfundiswa um, Mbong uh, Musa Masek. Welcome, um, all of you. I love you, and, and God bless you so very much. And um, I'm just gonna start, you know, with uh, basic uh, Passover issues as we begin today. And uh, I will throw in a, a whole lot of things uh, as, as the week progresses. But my plea with you is that with all these sessions that we'll be doing, you've got to do me a favor, catch up, so that uh, you know you don't have a lot of stock piling in terms of teachings that are just piling without being you know listened to. Especially my family that are getting WhatsApp uh, audios because after this we also have the, the the WhatsApp stream where we send all these teachings via WhatsApp. So do me a favor. 
ensure that you know you're digesting this as fast as you can because uh, we still have 10 more days to go for this uh, lockdown and, and this week let's look at um, 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 uh, Passover basically Passover is not about uh, you know uh, Easter bunny it's not about a rabbit and some chocolate it's not about the bunny and chocolate it's, you know you know a lot of people debate whether we should call it Easter whether we should call it Good Friday it, it, you know from my side it really doesn't matter what matters is that the focus of, of the feast has to be Christ the focus of the feast has to be Christ, you know. There is no volume of debate that can get that away, you know, from us. So the focus has to be Christ. When you talk about Passover, Passover is not about chocolate and a bunny and, you know, you know, with a carrot on its mouth and all of that. No, it has nothing to do with that. You know, Passover basically is about Christ. It's about the blood of Jesus. It's about who Christ is. It's about what Christ did for us. So the week, this week, we are going to focus on that. The, the week will be basically about Christ. The week will be looking at uh, dynamics of of, 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 of of Christ and, and with regard to what he did for us. We'll teach on the cross, pull in revelations from the cross, we'll teach about his blood, we'll teach about his person, we'll teach about number of things dealing with Christ. So I want you to, you know, just to relax and we're going to just eat a wonderful, you know, Passover lamb together and that Passover lamb is Christ. Hallelujah. So, we are reading from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. That's our scripture reading for today. We are reading from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. And let's hear what the Bible say from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. This was Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 1, creation began. Genesis chapter 2, um, and, and we, 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 we learn about Edenic dimensions. We learn about you know, issues with regard to the Garden of Eden. And there is a whole lot of revelations logged in Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 3, things went wrong. In Genesis chapter 3, things goes wrong things goes wrong things goes wrong so so one of the things that we need to learn is that uh, you know we we need to learn about the life that has happened in genesis chapter 3 draw out principles from genesis chapter 3 what are biblical principles that we can glean from genesis chapter 3 and how does that apply to us right now and how does that influences the work that christ did at the cross because a number of things that Christ did at the cross and, and prior the cross, hey, we're addressing a lot of problems that has happened in Genesis chapter 3. So if, when you study Genesis chapter 3, you are studying the beginning of, 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 of the fall or all kinds of things that has happened to, 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 to the first family, Adam and Eve and the rest of humanity. So when Christ comes, Christ comes and address the issues that went wrong in Genesis chapter 3. So we are just going to pick out one aspect of that because that chapter is loaded with revelation, it's loaded with wisdom, it's loaded with truth that we can glean for a number of days. But let's just glean one aspect of that, and then we 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 we, we see what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Genesis chapter 3, it says, For Adam also and his wife, the Lord made long coats or tunics of skins and cloth them. For Adam also and his wife, the Lord made for them, you know, coats or tunics, long coats or long tunics to dress them. Because the Bible says that after they discovered that they were not dressed, the Bible says that, and I want you to get this, I want you to get this. The Bible says that they made for themselves, you know, you know, you know, they paid, they, they, they made for themselves covering out of the leaves of the fig tree. The Bible said that they made for themselves covering and covered themselves by the by the leaves of the of the fig tree. Now, when they were bashed and taken out of the Garden of Eden, Scripture says that God did not just send them out of the Garden of Eden uncovered. God covered them by the skins 
the coat which was which were made out of the skins or the leather or uh, the skins of an animal in other words listen to this god killed an animal in order to cly to, to to clothe adam and eve for adam and eve to be covered for adam and eve to be covered god had to kill an animal and that animal shed its blood when the blood of the animal was shed God then got something to cover Adam and Eve. Now what do we see out of the skins of leather that were used to cover Adam and Eve? What we see here, we see dynamics of grace. We see, you know, the concept of grace because it was out of the death of an animal that this family were, 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 were this family was covered by the skins of leather so the skins of leather you see in the bible or you see in genesis 3 21 they reveal or represent the grace of god through jesus christ because for me and you to be clothed out of our nakedness of shame out of our nakedness of you know you know the absence of god's glory or the absence of god's covering christ had to die and when jesus died for us god then found grace in order to give to us in order to cover us so what basically happened in the garden in the in the genesis season when adam and eve were were, 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 were moved out of the garden of eden god did not move them graceless god did not send them out of the garden of eden without the covering of the Lord. In other words, the covering of the Lord, which was initially the glory, was replaced by the covering of skin, was replaced by the covering of what? By the covering of the coats of, the, of, 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 of an animal. In other words, the skin that was coming from an animal, which, way, which was used to create the covering for this family, represent for me a new grace. Grace is a concept of God. Grace is, is initiated by God through Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, through Christ, listen to me as we begin our Passover, through Christ, we have our covering. Through the animal, Adam and Eve got their covering. My covering and your covering is Christ. Get the revelation. My covering and your covering is Christ. So in other words, what is what is very, very important for us to understand is that when God killed the first animal in the scripture, which was used to cover these two, God also allowed his son Jesus Christ to go through the process of death. And out of that process, we got our covering. And our covering is Christ. That's number one. Number two, remember this family, what they did initially was that when they, when they, when they discovered that they are naked or undressed, I mean, they are not dressed or clothed, they created for them, what's this? They created for themselves the, 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 the patchings or the, the, the covering of, you know, from the fig tree, from the fig tree, they made together a covering out of the leaves of the fig tree. Now, when you do, I mean, it's very clear, when you look at the fig fig tree you know even if they can cover themselves by the leaves of the fig tree very soon it's gonna dry up very soon it's gonna dry up and then they left to patch it up again and cover themselves now god being the god of mercy god being the god of love realize that there is nothing that man can do for himself to cover his shame there is nothing that man can do for himself to cover his nakedness so even if we try by our own man-made systems because they they the, the, the leaves of the fig tree represent man-made systems. What Adam and Eve did to cover themselves is man-made systems that we use to cover ourselves. We use as a dimension or as a system of life. There is nothing that man-made system can offer you which is tangible. There is nothing that a man-made system can offer you. The covering of fig tree leaves, it can offer you, you know, much needed protection. It can offer you much needed that covering but you've got to understand that our genuine and real covering comes from the covering of grace which comes through Jesus Christ so what Adam and Eve did was to create a system and a system to cover themselves and this is what many of us do and you know we live life of patches I want you to get this revelation we live life of patches we patch here and there when we are still patching here this side is open when you're patching this side the other side is open it's a life of patches 
purchase. But there is a place where you don't need to live a life of purchase. There is a place in God when you come through Christ and obtain the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ through him, through his death, him as our Passover lamb. You will never have to live the life of purchase anymore. You will never have to live the life of relying on the man-made system. It has been proven over and over that the man-made system and the fig tree leaves that we can create for ourselves to cover ourselves and protect ourselves, it has failed over and over. There is a dimension of life that can come through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and this grace that you get through Jesus Christ is a covering that cannot be, you know, that cannot be destroyed easily like this covering of man-made, this covering of, 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 of fig tree leaves. The covering of fig tree leaves, the covering of fig tree leaves never offered much to Adam and Eve. At some stage, it will dry up. Three dimensions of life. The first level of life is the life of patches. You live by patch. I don't know if you're getting the meaning of this word patch. You live by patches. You patch here, you patch over there, you live by patching. And it's a system created by men. We live by patches. The bank accounts we have and the credit facilities we have and all these things are all men made patches to cover up for what can be done by grace. But when you come to the covering of the Lord, when you come to the covering of the Lord which is coming to us through Christ Jesus, just as Genesis 3.21 revealed, you will never have to patch, you know, your own life from for a, for, for a single day from that time henceforth. You will never have to live by patches. There is a place and watch this, that covering of the skins of the animal which was in representing what Jesus will do for us in the New Testament. This also teaches us that there is a place of sufficiency in, in Christ. There is a place of sufficiency in the grace. There is a place of sufficiency in the grace. Now when you move out of the life of patches, you come to the life of sufficiency. You come to the life of sufficiency. Now sufficiency, get this, sufficiency is the beginning, not the ultimate. Get that, get that, get that. When you come now under the covering of, 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 of grace, the covering of grace, you know, is not really the ultimate that God wanted for you. There is life and life in abundance. The Bible says that I have come that you may have life, the covering of this of, of, of grace, and have it in abundance. You know, in abundance. There is a place in God called abundance. There is a place in Christ where there are, where there are things in abundance. But we all began in sufficiency. Now, when you are moving in sufficiency, you just have enough to see you through. You just have enough to see you through a month. You just have enough to th to see you through your conditions and situations. But when you move and start to progress in Him, because the Bible says, in Him we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have our being. When you begin to move now in Him, you realize that sufficient, sufficient, sufficient things are no longer sufficient for you. You enjoy Joy, abundance. There is a place of abundance in Christ. There is a place of abundance in Christ. But it all begins in what? It all begins in having just enough. So what God did to, uh, to Adam and Eve when he killed an animal in Genesis 3.21, he was introducing them to the system of grace. He was introducing them to the system of just having enough. They just had enough, you know, to cover what was the need at that point in time. At least they were no longer using the pages of the fig tree leaves. Now they were relying on what? They were relying on the pay on the on the on the skins of leather. Skins of leather is not the ultimate. Skins of leather is not the ultimate. Now, once you move out of the skins of leather, you come to life and life in abundance. And that can only be offered by Christ. I want to charge you today as we begin our Passover online Passover conference that my friends, there is abundance in Christ. My friend, there is yes, there is joy, but there's joy in abundance. Yes, there is greatness, but there is greatness in abundance. Yes, there is healing, but there is healing and wellness. Wellness is not in the beginning. Wellness is when you press and get further and further. There were ten men who were healed of leprosy. Only one remained and returned. And when the one remained and returned, Jesus pronounced wellness to that man. The rest just got healing. It is found in the skins of leather where you just had enough you know, for your troubles. And it's called... You know, 
in the initial stages is, is it just in the beginning but when the one leper after showing himself to the priest when he returned Jesus pronounced healing and wellness there are dimensions that can only be received by those that press further in him Christ is a gen Christ is a gen our relationship with him is a gen now when you just start initially and come up in the beginning you will only get the covering of the skins of leather but there are those that will see more in him there are those that will come to transfiguration there are those that will begin to see more and more of the sides of Christ we have never seen. Now, if Adam and Eve only saw him as the one who can cover their shame, there was more about God. There are sides in God. There are dimensions in God that can only be revealed to those that press further in him. This relationship that you have with Christ, this relationship that you have with God through Christ is not only supposed to give you sufficient things. There is more in him. Press further press further in this journey press further in this relationship you 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 will discover more sorry you will discover more in him you will discover more in him there is abundance in him there is more in him now initially initially when 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 they received the covering of leather the covering of leather could could cover them for a specific period of time but it will wear out it will wear out. Now, when you press further and further and further in Christ, there are dimensions in him that do not wear out. There are dimensions in his glory that do not wear out. The skin of leather, listen to me, the skin of leather, the skin of leather is a level. And that skin of leather, remember there are, there are, there are levels in him. That level is a level where in what you receive need to be renewed, you know, from time to time. Need to be renewed from time to time. That that skin of leather must be renewed from time to time. But when you press further, you come into the place called glory. In the glory, the glory do not need to be renewed all the time. The glory remains. The glory is. The glory remains. The glory is the highest dimension you can touch and attain in God. The beginning of it is the blood. The second place is anointing. The highest level is the glory. Anointing, by the way, let me say this, let me say this, let me say this. Anointing is not the best that God can offer. There is a place in him called glory there is a place in him where we are we are all about god's glory so when you begin in the blood don't camp there when you move into anointing don't camp there press further to the glory it is the blood that begins our journey it is the anointing that keeps us going but it is in the glory where in now we are we arrive in all that which god wanted us to have initially adam and eve were covered by the glory so when they lost that glory of god when they sin and lose the glory of god they they have to move now into the life of pages. So for God to reintroduce them to the system, for God to reintroduce them again to the process, he needed to bring them through the blood. So the journey starts in the blood, but it does not end in the blood. Our walk with God starts in the blood of Jesus, but it doesn't end in the blood of Jesus. Don't camp at the blood. Yes, the blood is very important. Yes, the blood is the beginning of it all. And we don't have to lose the aspects and the elements of the blood of Jesus where it has all started but don't camp there don't camp there don't camp there the blood is at the door but get inside but when you get inside there is more when you get inside you realize that there is a thing called anointing anointing is not found initially in the beginning the blood is found in the beginning of your journey watch this watch this watch this in the beginning of the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan what they saw or experienced in the beginning was a Passover over lamb. There was the shedding of blood in the beginning of their journey. In the beginning of every journey that we have in the kingdom, there has to be aspects and elements of the blood. But then when they continue, when they continued in the journey, when they continued in the journey, they came now in the desert where there was the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. Anointing and fire, all this, you know, you know, 
All these charismas and charismatic dimensions, they are found in the journey. They are found when you start now to move, when you start now to move. So when you begin in him, you begin in the blood. When you move in him, you move now further into a place called anointing. When you move even further, you come into a place where you transfigure and you are glorified. You transfigure, you come into the glory. And I will get time and teach about the glory of God because the glory of God is the weight of God. The glory of God is the person of God. The the glory of God is when the flesh is so consumed so very much that you no longer see the flesh but we see Christ. When there is still the flesh that we can see in you, you have not yet passed further into a place called glory. When there, when we can still hear I, myself and I, you and myself, me, myself and I, you have not moved in the place called glory. When you move into the place called glory, it is no longer about you. It is no longer, we don't see you anymore. We see the man Christ living in you. We see the man Christ manifesting himself in you. We see the fullness of Godhead in you. We see the dimensions of God's glory manifesting in you. The weight of God sit upon you. You know, anointing is one thing and I want to say this, I want to say this as we introduce the Passover. Anointing is one thing that, you know, you can have it and still live, you know, a life of mess. You can carry dimensions of anointing and still be an anointed mess. You can live in the anointing and still live in sin, but not so in the glory. When you enter into the glory, God does not tolerate sin in the glory. When you enter into the glory, God does not, uh, you know, tolerate error. He does not tolerate inaccuracies. There's a man by the name of Moses who stepped into a dimension of glory and Moses made one thing and dishonored God in front of the Israelites instead of talking with the rock Moses hit the rock and God said that's it pack your bags come back home and Moses had to depart because of that thing there is a place in the glory of God where God does not tolerate error there is a place in the glory of God where God does not tolerate mistakes of the flesh you can do that in the anointing and still you know and still be be, be dealt with but when you move into the glory you must also understand that in the glory things have changed the rules of the game have changed but we're not into that today let's begin initially about the, 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 the grace which transmit which is transmitted to us through the blood the blood transmitted the covering of Adam and Eve the blood transmitted God's covering over our lives and that covering is called grace I, 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 I pray that you get that I pray that you get that initially when Adam and Eve were moved out of the Garden of Eden, God removed the covering they made for themselves. He created for them the skins, the skins of what? He created for them the skins of leather and covered them. That is a picture of grace. It is the death of Christ that releases the covering that comes upon us and suppose and give us sufficiency. But further after sufficiency, there is abundance. You don't get abundance in the sufficiency level of God. You don't get abundance in the, the, the blood stage of your walk with him. But when you move further and further, you will start to see that now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond, there is a place where God does exceedingly abundantly above. But you don't find it in the blood stage of your walk with him. You don't find these kind of dimensions when you're just walking out of Egypt. Walking out of Egypt is, 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 is a simple Thing. You just need the aspects and the elements of the blood. Now, once you come out of Egypt, now you start to see more and more and more that you have never seen him. You start to realize that he is he by himself. He is sufficient, but there is more in him when you start to relate deeper and further with him. You start to see the glories of him that you have never seen. You don't find that in the initial state. So the beginning of it all is Christ. That is why, friends, it is critical for you to be born again. That's why Christ, for Christ to be our covering, the beginning of Passover, it has to begin by the shedding of blood. The beginning of Passover begins in salvation. Don't start this journey by coming into gifts. Don't start this journey by rushing into prophet, the prophecies and the prophetic and so on. Don't start this journey in the wrong way. Enter properly. You enter through the gate and the gate is Christ. And at the gate, there has to be shedding of blood and the shedding of blood passes over the right to you to become a child of God. And I'm very much worried about our silence, apostles and prophets and all my, 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 my leaders who are watching me today. I'm very much worried about our silence when it comes to talking about issues of salvation. We are preaching all other important things, but there is something that we are not 
discussing and teaching more often the issues of salvation. Our walk with God is not about wisdom. Our walk with God is not about revelation. Our walk with God is not about power. Our walk with God is not about the healing of the sick. That comes in later. But let's, let's teach them properly. Let us all start at the blood. Let us all start at salvation. Let us all start at salvation. A lot of people we are leading are not born again. A lot of people that we are leading are lovers of information. A lot of people that we are leading are lovers of revelation. A lot of people that we are leading don't know God. They know pro prophecies. A lot of people that we are leading don't know God, but they know prophets. So it is important, friends, as I close... It is important, friends, that our Passover must begin in Christ. Our Passover begins in salvation. It's time that the message of salvation be restored back to our pulpits. It's time that the message of salvation be restored back to our churches. It's okay to preach, you know, you know, all these dimensions of wisdom and all of that and preach strategy and preach success, preach all these important things. I'm not bashing and, and I'm not against that. But what we need to encourage as well is that before you, you get the money, before you get the prophetic, before you get wisdom before you get all this dimension let's start properly let us start in salvation let us not lead churches of people that are knowing the prophetic yet not saved it all need to start right for adam and eve to start their journey it all needed to start properly it started it started in the blood genesis 3 21 god killed an animal for us that animal is christ for us that animal is christ who is our passover land for our journey to begin with God, blood has to be shed. Nobody can come to him without starting at the blood. And unfortunately, it's a sad state of affairs, especially, you know, you know, you know, in Africa, especially in different parts of the world, that salvation is not a popular teaching anymore. Salvation is not a popular dimension anymore. We are starting in success. We are starting about, you know, all kinds of good things. Yes, there's nothing wrong with it. But can't we start it right? Let's build this house properly. Let's begin at the blood. If you're watching me this afternoon and you're not you're not you're not born again, I'm, I'm encouraging you to begin your journey. Make a decision today to begin your journey in Christ through his blood. Make a journey today. Begin a journey today by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Perhaps you're watching to, we are, you're watching this afternoon and you were once saved and you know no 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 I know this doctrine of one save always saved and some somehow along the way you know you know you know you backslide and things goes wrong and that connection with God is no longer there. You want to come back as the prodigal son. Come back to the house of God. It is very much important that we all begin there. Let's not rush into levels of anointing. Let's not rush into the prophetic and so on. And I've seen this. I've seen this in a number of places that a lot of false ministers don't teach salvation. They teach things. The Bible says that first seek is the kingdom of God. The entrance to the kingdom. The door to the kingdom is the is the man Jesus himself is the door to that kingdom and that door is Jesus and you enter through his blood. Don't preach, let me say this, apostles, prophets, evangelists, my pastors and my teachers, don't preach the kingdom without the king. Don't preach the benefits without the king of that be those benefits. Don't preach about what God can do without presenting first the relationship. All these things began in the relationship. Passover is about the initiation of the relationship that we have with God the Father through Christ Jesus. Genesis 3.21, God slaughtered an animal. After that slaughtering, after the slaughtering of the animal, blood was shed. And through the blood, Adam and Eve got their covering. Through Christ, there is covering. Through Christ, our journey begins. The Passover lamb, Jesus is the beginning of the journey. Make a decision today. Make a decision today wherever you are watching us from. Receive him as your personal savior. Let him enter into your heart. Make a decision. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to start this move and walk further and further. No more about him, but never know him. It's not about him and the, it's not about knowing about him. It's about him. Christ must be the center. Christ must be the beginning. The Bible says that he is the beginning and the end. Have you met him in the beginning or have you met the prophets? Have you met him in the beginning or have you met the bishops? Have you met him in the beginning or you have met his healing? Don't start the relationship wrong. Start it at knowing him as the person. Let him be the Lord over your life. Say this prayer after me if you're not born again. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. 
come into my heart. I embrace you today as my Lord and Savior. I'm making a choice today to receive you as my Lord and Savior. In the precious name of Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. Wash me by your blood. You did it in the book of Genesis 3.21 where you offered grace through the blood to the first family of Adam and Eve. I pray that you offer me, God the Father, the grace through Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Come into my heart, Jesus, and be my Lord and Savior. I want to start this journey properly. I want to know you, that I may know him, that I may know him. I, des I desire to know you, Lord. I desire to know you, Lord. I desire to know you, Lord. I desire to know you. I desire to know you as my Lord and Savior. In the precious name of Jesus, write my name in the book of life. Come into my heart. As we begin this online Passover, Passover began in the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I will be coming back to do the second session just now by um, a quarter to six. I'm coming back to do the second session. There are those of you who have just joined. I'm coming back to do the second session. The beginning of it all is in the blood. The beginning of it all is in him. We all began in salvation. And don't rush. Go further and further and further. No more about church, but never know the God of the church. No more about the prophetic, but don't know Jesus. A lot of people we are leading, and a lot of people following us as leaders are not born again. It's time that we go back and teach the message of salvation. Genuine salvation in Jesus' name. Mighty name. Amen.